From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Janice Floyd, Mr. Dollar. Hello. I understand you don't quite believe that Jeannie Perling is dead. That's about right. I'm really not concerned one way or the other what you believe or disbelieve. I do know that I've been through quite an ordeal lately. And if you have any plans for interfering or bothering me in any way, I'll call the police. All right. I hope you understand that. I do. Well, then, goodbye. Goodbye. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Eastern Liability and Trust Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Perling matter. I wrote to Morton Scottman at Eastern Liability and I explained the circumstances under which I had arrived in New Orleans and located Jeannie Perling. I enclosed her death certificate and the medical statement. I also reported on the conduct of her ex-roommate, Janice Floyd. Then I sat down and called Janice on the phone. Hello? This is Johnny Dollar, Miss Floyd. Yes, I think what? it's time we had a talk. Mr. Dollar, we have nothing to discuss. I think we have. What? How you're being taken. Taken? By whom? By a couple of people. Goodbye, Look, Mr. Look, don't Do- hang up on me, Miss Floyd. I came down here to find Jean Perling. I'm with an insurance company. It was my job to check on a story her father told. Finding her was part of it. Let me come over and talk to you. I'll be home tonight. The apartment was six blocks from the hotel. I walked it for a reason. All kinds of people have followed me at one time or another, and I've followed all kinds of people. But the man who followed me off and on in New Orleans, the big blonde man with a 38, knew what he was doing. He was a professional. I made up my mind about that the first time I saw him, and I thought I was ready for him, but I wasn't. He waited until the streetlights got dim and no one was in sight. Oh! I vaguely remember that he caught me under the arms and laid me gently down on the street. That was all. Easy, buddy, easy. You've been making too much whoopee. Oh. You folks visiting down here ought to be more careful. Oh. Get your suit all dirty. I wouldn't have found you, but my cab conked out right here. Oh, my head, the side of my head. Uh, you must have fallen hard. You had enough for tonight, or you want to keep going? Oh, I've had plenty. Yes, sir. I'll call a doctor. No, no. Help me. I'll be all right. Go up. Easy now. Easy. Thanks. What time is it? Uh, uh, almost midnight. Two hours. Where you want to go? Wrestling Street. Get in. Get in. Expense account item 16, $10, to one good Samaritan cab driver who picked me up and dropped me at Janice Floyd's apartment. I was still weaving on my feet when I tapped on the door. Mr. Dollar, you've been hurt. Come in. I'm all right. Packing? Yes, I've decided to leave town. Tonight, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I thought it'd be something like that. Did a big fella, a blonde man, have anything to do with your decision to leave? That's none of your business. Let me tell you my business, Miss Floyd. I came down here to see Jean Perling. You saw her. She is dead. Yes, I saw her, dead. Yesterday, I mailed a copy of her death certificate to New York. Well, then what else? What other business? The man who came here yesterday and reported to you, the man who told you I'd left town and you could breathe easier again, the same man who called you later and told you I was still around, still asking questions. He's my business. He followed me on my way here tonight. He slugged me. He... I don't believe you're telling me the truth. What's his name? Any idea why he carries a gun? Carries a gun? You're making all this up. Why would I? I've got what I came for, or practically what I came for, legal proof of the whereabouts of one Jean Perling. If Al hit you, he was trying to protect me. Now, listen to me. I think I have pretty much of it in hand. Now, you tell me if I'm wrong. First off, you're not any Janice Floyd. I'd guess that Janice Floyd was the girl who died of leukemia. I've got her picture in my wallet. It was given to me by David Perling, who said it was his daughter. This is all crazy. Before you go into that, listen. I can have that body exhumed. I don't want to do it, but I will if I have to. Now, do you want me to do that? All right. I'm Jean Perling. 
And that was the Floyd girl who died? Yes. She was sick and... Well, I knew my father had detectives looking for me. I just never wanted to see him again or go home again. It seemed if... If poor Janice were dying and she had no one... If she somehow had my name and... Well, I'd never be bothered with my family again. That was a pretty idea. Was it yours? Al and I thought of it. Al? Al Britt. The blonde guy. Okay, how'd he work it? He saw to it that Janice had my name. I know it was against the law, but it... Well, she had no one, and if she was buried with my name, then I'd be free of my family. Well, that took some managing. They hate me. They always have. I want my own life. I don't blame you. You're entitled to it. Are you sure that's what you're getting? I'm going to marry Al, no matter what. If you go back and tell them, well, that'll be that. If you let me stay dead, I... Can't let that happen. Why not? Why not, Mr. Dollar? What harm would it do? Let your father make a fool out of you? I don't understand. You're worth $100,000. What? Cold, hard cash. An irrevocable trust was set up on you when you were born. Comes to you when you're 25. That'll be next month. I don't care about the money. Now, wait a minute. In the event you should die before your 25th birthday, the money would revert to your nearest of kin. My father? Your father. But I'm dead on paper. Uh Uh-huh. Then Al... Al... Somebody paid him, probably your father, to make love to you. Oh, no. No! Get out of here, Dollar. Al, wait. I told you this man meant nothing but trouble. He knows all about it. Oh, he can't prove a thing. Get out of here, you. Take it easy, Bruce. Al, Al. Yes, honey. I know about you. Honey, I... I don't know what to say. Go. Just go, please. He went. He looked at both of us as he went out the door. It was sort of a whip look. The way a puppy stares at you when you've caught him chewing on a slipper. I sat a while with Jean Perling. She didn't say much. There wasn't much she could say. I told her I didn't think there was any reason for her to go back to New York unless she wanted to. She said she didn't want to go, didn't know what to do at the moment, and, well, we left it at that. I went back to my hotel and tried to get some sleep. About 6 o'clock in the morning, I got up, bathed, shaved, and packed. By 7.30, I had breakfast and was just about to check out. Hello? Hello, Britt. Leaving? That's right. I'd like to talk first. Sure. Okay. You messed it up fine for her and me. I tried to call her this morning and she hung up on me. Went over there, she wouldn't let me in. I don't blame her, do you? I guess I don't. I decided to leave town. Yeah, maybe that's better. I don't know whether it is or not. You make it hard for a guy to talk. All right, now look at it my way. This whole thing's been rotten. I met her father, and I know what kind he is. I know what he's done to her, what he'll do to her if she goes back. And then there's you, Britt, the hired man. You went in and made love to her for a salary. I didn't like it having to tell her that, and it must hurt. It must hurt pretty bad. So you see, I'm not too interested in what you might have to say or what you're going to do. Wait. You're right reading me out this way. I deserve it. The old man found out where she was four months ago. I found out for him. I knew the girl she was living with had leukemia. I planned the whole switch. I put it to her the way she explained it, about being dead to keep away from her old man. Of course, you didn't mention that 100000 he could get his hands on once she was dead. Oh, I didn't. But, but something funny happened to me, Dollar. I mean, oh, I've done my share of dirty jobs. I've seen a lot of the human race. Taking a salary to make a sucker out of her didn't bother me at all. Not at first. And then I found out when she touched my face, I... I lived for that touch. And when I held her, she she lived for me. I never thought it had happened to me, but... it did. If you see her again, Dollar, tell her I was trying to stop it. I mean, all this part. But it was too late. (laughs) Funny how things turn out, huh? Yeah. Funny. Expense account item 17, $42.13, hotel and board bill. Item 18, $101 even, airplane ticket back to Hartford. Item 19, $1, cab fare. I stopped by her apartment on my way to the airport. Oh, 
I thought you'd left, Mr. Dollar. Well, I came to say goodbye. How's it going today? All right. I have some brandy. No, no thanks. Jean. Yes? You going to New York? No, I'll stay here a while. I don't want to see my father or mother. How about Al Britt? He wants to see you. Let's not talk about him, shall we? Do you think I'm a nice girl? Do you think my $100,000 will attract a lot of nice, eligible young men to me? Do you think oh, I... Oh, stop it. You'll burn your brakes. Show me. Oh, no. Here. I know what he did. I know why he did it. But I love him. He did his job too well. Yeah. He could tell you what he started out to do and what happened to him with you. He could tell you if you let him. He told you? Yeah. What kind of a trick is it? No trick. Couldn't be. The guy's too mixed up. Tell you what, he'll try again. When he calls up next time, talk to him. Why should I? Because you may not have a mother and father or anyone else, but you do have him. And you will have him as long as he lives, if you want him. And that's what you've been looking for all your life. Someone to have. I'd take him if I were you. Item 20, $10, miscellaneous. Total expense account, $714.35. Remarks, none. Report, she took him. They were married in Tampa this morning. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week, a lonely girl, a fine young man, a gentle father, and one of them is a killer. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Mary Jane Croft, Forrest Lewis, Jeanette Nolan, Russell Thorson, Michael Ann Barrett, Jack Petruzzi, Barbara Fuller, Herbert Ellis, and Marvin Miller. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino and Carl Fortina. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. Thank you.